As dedicated leaders, the future of our community hinges on the choices we make now. Without the significant and swift emergency response by UJA, powered by each of you through philanthropy and volunteerism, the impact will be even more painful in the short term and devastating over the long term. That is why UJA is launching its emergency campaign for community resilience. This is a defining moment for our Toronto Jewish community and never before has your leadership been more important and meaningful than it is at this time. We've been so inspired by the women throughout our community who have stepped up as leaders in this moment of crisis. By giving so generously of their time and funds to help those who have been hit hardest by the COVID-19 crisis, Jewish women across our city are making a real difference in the lives of so many. It gives us tremendous confidence about the future of our community. It's clear that we're seeing the emergence of an inspiring generation whose children and grandchildren will one day look back upon with admiration, knowing that the thriving community they enjoy was made possible because of your incredible leadership. We appreciate your being a part of UJA. As female leaders, you will shape our future and we need you now more than ever. Please watch this short video that explains how UJA and our partner agencies are responding to the current challenges. are scared. Our clients are frightened. People worried about how am I going to support myself? How am I going to support my family? This is that rainy day. In fact, this is a thunderstorm. It's a tsunami. Our seniors, many, are in a state of crisis. We're hearing a lot from women who have found themselves in abusive situations from which they can't escape. And all of a sudden, because of COVID, have no income and are worried about feeding their children. One of the things that has been very challenging is watching our frontline staff and some of our co-workers become ill. With school closing, our respite programs, after school care, all of our supports have been sort of on hold. I, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to us to say that they would not be eating right now if it wasn't for, you know, the collective efforts of our community. From day one, UJ contacted us and got us enough Zoom accounts. And with the support of UJ Federation, we've been able to prepare and deliver over 7,200 meals. Really, with UJ, they allow us to treat our clients with respect and dignity. why UJA was created. UJA was created to be able to respond as a community so that every Jewish person in this community has their needs met. A donation can make the difference between us having these services for years to come and a service that's being cut. Clearly these are unprecedented times. is the time when your money can really make a difference. It's our obligation to show everybody in our community that we are not indifferent. The need is so great and it's so obvious and it's so local. If we don't give and support our most vulnerable now, then when? Hi, I'm Mara Klein one of the co-chairs of Young Women's Leadership. What resonated with me the most is how quickly UJA responds in times of need. In less than two months, UJA, with the support of donors and volunteers, has saved social services partners from failing. It is truly amazing. And while we've accomplished so much, we know that there is still so much more to do. This video makes me proud to be involved in Young Women's Leadership. And I know that the decisions we make today will have incredible impact on the future of Jewish Toronto. On behalf of myself and my fellow co-chairs at Young Women's Leadership, Leah Baruch and Kelly Ostro, we'd like to thank our amazing and dedicated committee, Jennifer Goldar, Heather Herwin, Ilana Mazur, Samantha Richmond, 
Regan Testis, Jillian Tishman, and Michelle Warner for working so hard and tirelessly to help develop young women's leadership in this amazing webinar. Thank you, Mira. I am Leah Baruch, and I am one of the co-chairs of Young Women's Leadership. I would like to share a bit about UJA's Young Women's Leadership. Young Women's Leadership is an arm of women's philanthropy aiming to create meaningful relationships with like-minded women who prioritize community involvement alongside obligations in their personal and professional lives. They are bolstered by an understanding of and commitment to UJA and its work in Toronto, Israel, and overseas. It provides opportunities for women to meet each other, strengthen their identity as Jewish women in the community, and learn how UJA provides critical support to over 100 agencies. Young Women's Leadership encourages new and diverse connections, enabling growth both personally and professionally. The focus of Young Women's Leadership highlights inclusive, engaging, and inspirational programming with the intent of fostering a community of emerging female leaders and philanthropists. We foster a deeper involvement in the Toronto Jewish community and inspire individual giving. Young Women's Leadership is proud to showcase many of the wonderful people and organizations involved with and supported by UJA and brings more attention to ways we can support each other. By providing an inclusive environment, women can emerge as leaders, building a commitment to UJA and giving back to the community in a meaningful way. Thank you, Leah. We also wanted to share with you that we are launching our Young Women's Leadership Instagram shortly. Be on the lookout for at UJAYWL. I am very excited and very honored to welcome our special guest, Sari Nisker Fox, this morning to lead us in a special yoga and meditative practice. After working in entertainment media sales and marketing beauty pro products in New York, Sari became te began teaching yoga in 2003. She offers yoga and meditation as a way to connect and understand the human experience and the world we live in with more depth and more appreciation. Her innate curiosity for the mind-body connection inspires her holistic wellness and life coaching. Sari's current focus is mindfulness, movement, and overall health to individuals and corporations. She also offers educational experience experiences to show the incredible results that a daily mindful and movement practice, in addition to nutritional foods, can have on productivity, camaraderie, creativity, and connectivity. She has been featured and quoted in the Globe and Mail, Hello Canada, Flare Magazine, HGTV, Best Health, and Breakfast Television, as well as regularly contributing to Tonic Magazine, and recently, an invited guest on their sister podcast, Tonic Talks. We are pleased and honored to be led by Sari this morning. Welcome, Sari. Good morning, women. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute privilege. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure that the sound is good because I don't want to start over. <laughs> Can I get a thumbs up from somebody? Perfect. Thanks, Regan. Um, actually, I want to start off by thanking the UJA for inviting me, uh, specifically Regan Tessis. It's such an honor to be here, and I'm so moved by the video and the work that you all are doing. It's really, it's really inspiring. And uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank Ali for helping to coordinate all of this. We've been on the phone all week. And I want to thank uh, Rebecca Moffs from Sweat Chic for generously giving me this shirt because this is what we all need to do. Um, so um, I know that we are kind of pressed for time, but I do want to share with you some practices that um, are no doubt so essential for us right now uh, for our mental and physical health. Um, you know, not only is our leadership required and uh, really being demanded now for our leadership in the community, 
but um, this is a time where we really also have to become leaders in our life and um, take care of our mental and physical health. So I want to try to pack as much value as I can into this um, half an hour um, this morning with some tools that will help us to remember that we have agency over um, how we show up every day. And uh, you guys already know this because, I mean, with all the work that you do and your dedication to being leaders in your community, this is really no different. And the more that we pay attention to our mental health and tending to our physical health and caring about ourselves and the people in our households and our friends um, in this way as well, um, the greater impact that we have. So uh, I'm going to start off with a short meditation practice. I'm going to give you a little education too. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of movement, really simple sequences, just so you can do them at home, you know, between your meetings and between schooling and whatever else you do. And then we'll close with uh, meditation as well. So I love everybody to just come together. Um, even though we're apart, we're still together and we're still sharing our energy. So uh, this is a practice that I do um, most every day. And it's really simple. I often hear from uh, clients and students, like I can't meditate, um, I am not mindful, I have so many thoughts, I want my thoughts to stop, but here's the thing, um, it is not natural for our thoughts to stop, right? We want to acknowledge all the thoughts that we have and how we have agency over it is whether we're gonna give them life, right? Are we gonna give our thoughts life, especially those repetitive ones, right, that are on that loop? So it's becoming aware and actually becoming a witness to what we're thinking about and how we're feeling. Um, you know, as women in the community, you all, I'm sure, lead incredibly busy lives um, in your household and beyond. And often we forget to ask, you know, what do I need, right? Because when we start to ask ourselves that, um, everything changes. So wherever you are, please sit up tall. And I'm going to ask that you close your eyes. We're all in our homes and our safe spaces. And uh, let's begin. So the fastest way to come into the present moment is to feel your body. I share this in every single class that I teach. So feel your body exactly where you are in space. So whatever chair you are in, or if you're on the floor, just feel the connection to the earth. If your back is against the chair, feel that. Feel the support just here in your environment. And so as you start to notice the physical space, Notice the potential spaciousness all around you as well. So notice how you are feeling today and see if you can just name it without judging it, right? Whatever it is, we have labels for everything. So just notice the label that you're choosing And then take a very deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale through the mouth. And just do that a few times, really simple. Inhale into the chest and the belly. And exhale through the mouth. One more time like that. Exhale through the mouth. And then with your hands, bring your left palm onto your heart, flat onto your heart, your right palm onto your belly, and start to breathe a little bit deeper. So breathe into your hands. Just do that a few times, full deep inhalations, smooth exhalations. And so the mind will wander, right? It is supposed to. Right, and things may need your attention, but the practice is bringing your attention back here. And that's the game, that's the practice. The more we do that, the more we understand what we're thinking about, 
the quality of our thoughts, how loud they are, how old they are. So let's take three more breaths here together. One more, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Softly open up the eyes. And just notice, right? Notice the shift in your presence, in your attention, where you're at, what you're thinking about, right? It just brings us into the moment. And that's essentially what mindfulness is, right? Cultivating our connection to the present moment. And so when we add some movement on top of that, this really helps us to release our stress, to release our um, whatever kind of um, anxious feelings that we're having, right? We get the opportunity to kind of open up the body. You can think of it like opening up a window, ventilating all these feelings out. Um, so really simply, I just wanna start wherever you are. You can move to your mat, you can stay seated. I'll move to my mat in a moment but I just wanna give you a few simple poses right now. So just take a few shoulder rolls back, right? Just notice what you're carrying here, what you're holding here. Just a few shoulder rolls back and then just a few shoulder rolls forward and add breath to it. You know, as a yoga teacher, we're constantly reminding her students to breathe. And so this was a perfect shirt to wear today. Um, and then on your next inhale, you're just gonna to start to reach your arms all the way up. And then you're gonna take your right elbow into your left elbow, like so. And if your palms don't come together, don't worry about it. You can actually bring your palms to the tops of the shoulders. And you're just gonna kind of lift the arms up, take a deep breath in, and then exhale. You can even curl the spine a little bit here, rounding through the back, and just doing that a few times. All right, and if you're in, we call this eagle arms. You can just pull those elbows in like an arrow. All right, so this just releases a little tension from the back body, from the shoulders. All right, we're all hunched over computers right now. And let's release, we're just gonna switch sides. So left over right, same thing. If the palms don't come together, don't worry about it. We adapt our bodies, we adapt the poses to our bodies and not the other way around, right? So palms right at the tops of the shoulders if you need as well. So inhale, you're just gonna lift up, exhale, rounding through the back. So the more that we bring our attention to our breath, keep going, we kind of bypass the mind, right? We stay in our body, stay in the present. One more. Rather than giving our attention to our thoughts, right? Because the present is all that we have. All right, let's do one more stretch here together. So interlace your fingers behind your back and then just open up the chest, nice and simple. Right, and so instead of yanking the shoulders back, just start to lift up through the heart. Find a few deep breaths. Right, so nothing that I've shared so far is super advanced, right? All simple movements, we just have to remember, right? That's the advanced part, remembering that we have control over our actions, our thoughts, and what we can do. All right. And then just release your arms, shake out the fingers, shake out the hands, and then I'll meet you on your mat. <laughs> I'm gonna come onto my mat. And uh, just really simple, just stand right at the top of the mat, arms come down by your side, take a little bend in the knees. I'm just gonna inhale, reach the arms up. We're just gonna start to open up the front of the body. Take a little bend in the knees, and then exhale, just fold forward. Hands come to the shins. You're gonna peek up, look forward, and then exhale, fold all the way back over the leg. So opening up through the hamstrings, through the low back, and then inhale, just roll it all the way up. Big shoulder roll at the top. We're gonna do that again and just start to build. So you're gonna inhale, arms up. Little bend in the knees, exhale, fold all the way over the body, hinging at the hips, right? Make sure that you bend the knees here. Hands to the shins, look forward. And then slowly just bow into your legs. 
And then last time, inhale, just reach the arms up. Exhale, arms come down by your side. Okay, let's build them to this. Inhale, arms up. Bend to the knees, slowly fold forward. You're gonna bring your hands to your shins. You're gonna look up. You're gonna bend your knees deeply so your hands can come to the mat. Step your right foot way back to a long lunge and then just release your back knee. So if you have knee issues, you can just stay forward here. You're gonna just open up through the right hip. You can fold over the side of the mat if you need to or place a blanket underneath that right knee. Walk your hands up your left thigh if that suits you. Stay here or just start to reach your arms up. If you're feeling anything in that low back, then just pull the hips back just a little bit so you're not dumping into those hips and into your low back. Just start to reach the arms up. You're just gonna take two more breaths. Just notice how different, even just these few stretches make you feel, right? This is what we wanna remember. This is what we want to imprint into our hearts, into our body. And then you're just gonna bring your hands down and you're just gonna step that left knee back. Take your knees out wide and just come into a child's pose. You're just gonna let your head come down, your third eye. I'm just gonna peek up so I can talk. But you stay down. This is a really nice place to come when you're feeling overwhelmed. We're all at home. So you can just drop down to your knees, relax your head, catch your thoughts, catch your breath. And then we're gonna slowly come on up, hands and knees. And we're just gonna work out any kinks in the spine. So you're just gonna press your palms underneath the shoulders. Your knees are under the hips. My knees are hip distance apart. And I'm just gonna arch my back here, looking up. And then exhale, I'm just gonna round through my back, chin to chest. We're just gonna do that a few more times. Arching the back and rounding through the back. One more time. Arching and rounding. You can do this as many times as you like. Just making sure that we have movement and circulation in the spine. And then you're just going to curl the toes under and we're going to move into what we call a downward dog. So lifting up through the hips, you can separate your feet, shoulder distance, hip distance apart, palms or shoulder distance. Let the head go. So the great thing about downward dog is that it's a full back body stretch, right? Upper body, lower body. And then you just pedal out through the heels, just bending one knee at a time. Just opening up through the backs of the legs. You're gonna take a deep breath in here. Exhale through the mouth. Just let it go. You're gonna roll forward, roll the shoulders forward to a plank. Right away, drop the knees. And then as you bring your chest forward, as long as you don't have any shoulder issues, just slowly lower down. And we're just gonna open up through the front of the body a little bit more. So push down through the tops of the feet. Inhale, just find a little cobra, rise the chest here and lower. We just got one more. And lower. Curl your toes under, press all the way back to that child's pose and then downward dog. Take a deep breath here. Exhale through the mouth and then we're just gonna walk our feet forward to the top of the mat. When you get there, hands to shins, you're just gonna look forward. And then again, bend the knees deeply so you open up through the hamstrings and just lower into your legs. From here, start to reach your arms all the way up, nice and strong. Arms come down by your side. All right, inhale, arms lift up. Little bend in the knees, slowly start to dive forward. Hands to your shins, look up to lengthen the chest. And from here, we're just gonna step our left leg back. So we're gonna do that lunge on the other side. Again, take support underneath the left knee if you need. Walk your right hand up, left hand up. Stay here with the palms on the thigh. or start to reach the arms up, chest lifts. So again, instead of just sinking forward, we wanna think about how we can lift up. Right, and more important than this actual pose here is the breath, okay? Where is your breath? Just gives you so much feedback. 
as to where you are in space and how you're feeling. Notice when you're holding it, when you're exercising a deep inhalation, right? When you're holding the breath and not letting it out. Take one more inhale. And then hands come all the way down. On the exhale, right knee comes down. And then from here, you're going to curl your toes under and again, come into your downward facing duck. And then again, we're just going to pedal out through the heels. Bending one knee at a time. And then come forward to a plank. So roll your shoulders out over the wrists. Again, drop the knees. Bend the elbows lower down. Point your toes. Roll the shoulders up and back. Find a cobra. Keep a bend in the elbows here. Push down through the feet lower. Any low back issues, just be mindful. But explore. Consciously and with breath. And then curl the toes under. Move through that child's pose. Downward dog. We'll just stay here for a breath. And then as you look forward, you're just going to start to walk your feet up to your hands and come to sit at the top of the mat. And you're just going to extend your legs straight out in front of you. Little bend in the knees, arms lift all the way up. And then exhale, just fold your body forward, let the head go. Right, so not only getting a really great hamstring stretch, but make it more about the spine, right? All of us are kind of hunched over in our upper back, and this is where we're really soft. So see if you can try to lengthen the chest up a little bit, bend the knees here, and then fold at the hips, and let the head go. Just hang here. You want to look back into your heart. Just soften. You know, part of this practice is showing up and being active, but it's also about surrendering. Surrendering that which I cannot control. Take one more breath here. And then slowly Roll it all the way up. Just two more poses here before I take you through another meditation. And as you bend your knees to bring the soles of the feet down, you're going to roll onto your back. And so just like downward dog was a full back body stretch, we're going to do a bridge, which is a full front body stretch. Okay, so it's a really nice way to close out a uh, a yoga practice, a physical practice. So you're just going to bring your arms down by your side. And you're going to walk your feet back so they're hip distance apart, spread through your toes. As you push down through your palms, just start to lift your hips up any amount. All right, just stay here. You're going to start to feel the muscles in the backs of the legs start to activate. Push down through the heels. You can interlace your fingers under the back, maybe even roll the shoulders under. All right, we're just going to be here for another three breaths. All right, you want to stand tall in your feet. Press down through the back of the head. Stay here for one more breath. And then as you release your hands, release your hips all the way down. Knock your knees side to side. Okay, let both knees fall to the left, okay? So you can keep them apart, or if you want a more intense twist here, you can stack them. So you can stack your right knee over your left, and then you're gonna either extend your right arm up to the side, right up to the right, or bend your right elbow. We call this a cactus. You can cactus the arm, gaze to the right, and just hold it here for three breaths. So you can think of your twists as detoxifying, 
So maybe letting go of a thought, something that you're hanging on to that is not serving you, right? That is actually a block and coming between you and the incredible work that you can do, right? In your household and beyond. Knees all the way up. And then we're just gonna let the knees go to the other side. And then again, left arm extends out. You can cactus your arm. Just gonna take two to three more breaths. Right, so the magic of the practice is really the breath, letting the breath lead you. Right, the poses are just calisthenics. They're just kind of statues. Right, if there's no breath, that's the magic. We're just gonna take another inhale and exhale. Start to draw the soles of the feet down as your hips come back to center and then walk your feet out to the perimeter of the mat. So just walk them out so you feel the size of the mat and let your knees fall into center. So before we come into our resting pose, I just want to share that this is a really amazing pose if you feel any tension in your low back at the end of the day, just to come to lie on your back, knees fall into each other, they kind of find their, their balance here, left palm to the heart, right palm onto your belly, three breaths here. Just come into this moment, because truthfully it's all we got. And we are much more resourceful in this moment than the one in the future and the one that just happened. Softly open up the eyes, hug the knees in. All right, last pose. You're going to bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees open wide. Okay, so it's a little bit of a hip opener. You can stay here. Or if you want to fully come into a resting pose, we call this Shavasana, you can extend one leg out at a time, arms extend out, and close the eyes. And so I'm going to talk you through another meditation, because I think at this time here in our lives, this is more important than these poses. The poses are incredible and they're complementary, and they, they keep us flexible and sitting up tall, but really it's about being mindful of our energy, mindful of our thoughts. And so as you settle in here, into your resting pose, I want you to imagine and visualize this beautiful white golden light at the top of your head. And imagine this beautiful golden light just beaming down on you and starting right in your face as it releases all the tension and any holding in your eyes, in your nose, in your mouth, in your ears. Every place that this golden light touches helps to rinse out any tension. So feel the golden light just beaming down on your neck and on your shoulders, softening through the heart. The light moves all the way down your arms and right out through the fingertips. Feel that golden light just moving and rinsing any tension that you are holding or your body feels contracted in the chest, in the back body, in the belly. Notice that golden light just moving all the way down into your hips. 
This is our emotional center energetically. Just feel how that golden light is just releasing whatever you are holding there in your hips and all the way into your legs and your knees. Notice that golden light, just rinsing the tension all the way out through your ankles and your feet and your toes. And that golden light just makes its way through your whole physical being, taking any stress and any tension with you. and feel that light within you that you share, that you carry. Feel that bright being that is you. Bask in that light. From here, you're going to take a deep breath in through the nose. And you're just going to exhale through the mouth. And just start to stretch the arms all the way up and over the head. And then start to draw the soles of the feet down to the mat. And then you're just gonna roll over onto your right side, just using your right arm as a pillow and just honor yourself here. All the work that you do, the UJA and beyond in your households, for your family, for your friends, for your community. Honor stepping into that role of being a leader in your own life. And as you press your left palm down, use it to help lift you all the way up to a seated position. And come to cross legs, sitting up top. And just finding a few breaths here. You can keep the eyes closed. And keeping the eyes closed, just bring your fingertips out in front of you. And then just one more time, just bow your head. Just stretch your hands out, stretch your chest out. Let the head go. Just relaxing here and softening here. And then just begin to roll all the way up to a seated position. And we'll just spin the hands up. So back to the hands, press down into the thighs, palms are open. So part of becoming mindful is identifying perhaps something that you want to cultivate within yourself. And it could be anything, right? And this is about creating intention and living intentionally. And clearly you all do this. And perhaps there's also a quality within you that you want to nurture because that's what leaders do. It's not about being better, but it's becoming more of who you are. So if there's a quality about yourself that you want to kind of loosen the grip on, 
place that in your hands here to let go. If there's a quality that you want to bring more energy to, focus on more, put that here in your hands. In yoga, it's all about gestures. And in life, it's about gestures too. So this is a gesture for creating that which you want. Breathe right here. And then bringing your palms together as you seal your practice in, just bow your head here into your prayer, just honoring your dedication to your own self-care, your own practices that help to keep you grounded. Do you show up as you want to? I want to thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your trust. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate being here. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to post them in the chat. Any questions about mindfulness or yoga? Uh, thanks, Regan. Thank you so much. Anything at all, you can post it right here in the chat. I'm here for you. Um, just to be clear, oh, good, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. The, the first meditation that I did just to witness the thoughts, um, it's, it's really a good time um, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling like you, you're being pulled in a million different directions just becoming aware of what you're thinking about is so important. And then kind of once you do that and you calm your nervous system, then you can start to prioritize, okay, what, do I, what am I gonna do first? What am I thinking about? What's happening? And the last meditation that we did is really about rinsing stress and tension from the body. Um, you know, I can't control, we can't control what's happening on the outside, but we can certainly control how our nervous system receives it. And this is really the gift of what the meditation and yoga does, right? It tells our nervous system that, you know, we can be calm, we can create change here because this is where it starts, it starts with us. And thank you, Leah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rebecca. For remaining centered. Oh, thanks for the question. Um, remaining centered when the world is so palpable. Yeah. Um, I, you know, for me, I think it's really about being mindful of your own energy, um, and creating, um, healthy boundaries. Right. And I say, in every relationship that is healthy, we, right. We have to create boundaries. So noticing when you're, um, you're being pulled into things or conversations or relationships or people, that really takes you off your center, right? And noticing where you can actually create a boundary, um, maybe limiting the time, limiting how you respond. I mean, this is what yoga teaches us, right? To pause, to breathe, and then respond with what, with our, with our true essence, right? Like what we really want to say, not our reaction out of fear, um, um, right? Out of being, feeling anxious. It's, responding in a way that is kind and clear um, and honors where you're at. I hope that that was helpful and answer the question. That helped um, deal with stress, yes. So, um, doing these breathing exercises with your kids. You can incorporate balloons um, and different colorful balloons. That's what I do with my two girls when um, things kind of go awry, which is sometimes daily. <laughs> um, you know, just taking a moment, breathing with them. They actually get it, right? Um, when my girls see me meditate, they'll come sit on my lap. They won't necessarily meditate with me, but they're gonna feed off my energy. And so I'll invite them to take a deep breath in and imagine that they are blowing up a big red balloon or a big blue balloon or whatever their favorite color is. 
Um, so it's really, it's really um, um, a good practice to incorporate for the whole, to, for the whole family. Thank you so much for having me, everybody. Thank you. Sari, thank you so much for that meaningful, relaxing, and educational uh, program and experience. It was really wonderful. Thank you all uh, to our participants for joining us. And I'm so sorry that we had technical issues at the beginning. I trust you can all hear me now. My name is Melissa Muscat, and I am proud to be the chair of Women's Philanthropy Division for the 2020 campaign. If you have already made a gift this year to the emergency campaign, thank you so very much. And if you have not yet done so, we encourage you to connect with us in the days ahead. We know the pandemic has impacted all of us in so many ways. Any amount that you can give will really make a difference. Before we close this morning's presentation, I want to acknowledge that there are many people who are suffering terribly from this crisis whether facing health, mental health, or financial challenges. If you or someone you know need help, needs help, please do not hesitate to reach out to us because we really do care. In the chat, you will see a hotline number. Please remember, we are here to support you in any way that we can. I really wanna thank you all again for taking the time to join us this morning.